Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Biggie546? This is gonna be a video about Shep. Uh, I got a little bit of gullet in here, but it's mostly about Shep. And it's about what our receivers did. I'm very confident in our top two receivers after what I saw. And it also shows a little bit of what Jason Garrett did on some of these plays to get Sterling Shepard open. So I wanna get straight into this, but first let's have a quick word from our sponsor, BetQL. Wanna get an advantage over your sports book? You need to download BetQL. Their best best algorithm scans over 350,000 bets per year to give you a best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports with reason why you should place the bet. Their model covers everything from spreads to over-unders to player prop bets. Don't want to use the model? They've got you covered with sharp data so you can see who the pros are backing and line movement so you can jump on betting opportunities in real time. They've got team summaries highlighting previous success against the spread and over-under with breaking news on lineups and injury status. Obviously, that helps with fantasy. And you can track how your past bets have done and where you rank on leaderboards. Head to the App Store or Google Play Store now to download BetQL. You can also head to try.betql.co slash diggy to get started now. Enter code diggy at checkout to get 25% of all of their subscriptions. All of this information can be found in the description where you can also find their Bet MGM offer that'll get you a free year of BetQL. If you live in an eligible state, you'll find free offers for your favorite sports books. I won't tell if you click that bell, but I will tell if you miss out on this opportunity with BetQL. All right, so Sterling Shepard pretty much had one of the better games of his career. I mean, I definitely in the top three games of his career so far, and he looked really dominant. Ever since he's put that number three on, he's looked like a completely different player, even more shifty than before. I don't know what's gotten into him, but he's been very, very electric starting in camp. Now, on this particular play, Sterling Shepard is lined up in the slot, and he's just going to run just a quick slant and doesn't get that much separation, but is able to catch the ball in traffic and catch the ball with someone hanging on him to be able to still convert this first down. So let's watch this. Doesn't really get pressed at the line of scrimmage. One-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Sterling Shepard hits him with a nice rocker step to fake like he might go up this seam. Gets back inside, and the linebacker did a great job of not really falling for that, you know, rocker step that, that will make it seem like he was going to go up the seam because he's like, it's third down. They're probably going to throw to the sticks, and they throw to the sticks. Sterling Shepard catches the ball in traffic, gets tackled, but makes sure that he gets that first down and is able to actually make sure that he doesn't get tackled by that linebacker completely. Justin Simmons comes in and cleans it up. So, of course, the NFL is still being the jerks that they are by not providing us with the All-22. But this is the closest thing that I'm going to get to it. And you're basically going to see uh, these two routes, Galladay, Darius Slayton. Both Galladay and Darius Slayton are going straight up the field, almost to the middle of the field, to clear out for Sterling Shepard, who's going to run this crosser all the way across the field and does a great job of doing it the play was executed beautifully the play was designed well in my opinion because it got that one-on-one -on -one with sterling shepherd matched up on a rookie coming across the field so let's watch this as sterling shepherd makes his way across the field pretty much starts it off like he's going to run um uh, run an inside route pretty much just run about you know to the sticks and then and then just break to the left but he turns this into a crossing route and at this point certain is completely out of the picture because they are in fact playing man coverage certain was trying to make sure he kept outside leverage shep doesn't do a great job of of making it seem like he's going outside but with someone that's this shifty he could always be trying to get back to the outside and certain is making sure that he doesn't give up that outside but it ends up biting him in the, you know, biting him in the tail. Shep turns what would be a regular inside route to essentially just a regular crosser. He's one on one with Sertain. Sertain can't make the tackle, and at that point, he's completely off to the races and just makes a great play after the catch. 
to get into the end zone. This is another example of how I think Jason Garrett actually helped Shep get open. Again, it's not like Jason Garrett is some superstar offensive coordinator, but this play design definitely got Sterling Shepard open. You have Slayton running deep. You have Galladay running deep, which is exactly what they're both here for. You got Shep taking this out route, and you got Caden Smith taking the out route on the other side. Very simple play design. This is what gets people open. I just hope we can do this consistently throughout the year. But this is what gets people open. So this route becomes open because Shep is running this out. You got Galladay stretching the field. So what you have is a situation where Galladay pulls that corner up. Shep is open. A nice little, I mean, not really a chunk play, but about seven, seven to, it's about, about seven to ten yards right there. And he's able to convert on a second down so we don't end up on a third down. And again, who would have ever thought that I would just turn into some <laughs> Jason Garrett fan? I promise. I'm not a blind supporter of Jason Garrett. But these are some decent play designs that continuously got Sterling Shepard open. And what you're going to see, so what you're going to see is Shep is basically going to run sort of a flat route. You're going to have your tight end running a corner. And then you're going to have Slayton coming across the field. And this is three levels. Uh, I'm pretty sure Galladay ran a streak right here or a comeback. But these are three levels of decisions for Daniel Jones to make. It makes it a lot harder. It's hard to defend against man. It's hard to defend against zone because if you're in a zone, any defender in this area of the field is going to have a tough time figuring out, do I defend back here? Do I defend up here? If you're a man, you got this crosser right here. You got this corner route right here. And you got Shep kind of going out to the outside there. And you might have a one-on-one with Galladay down the field. So Garrett motions Shep across the field. He comes out. And if you read it right, DJ read it right. They take the bait on the tight end. Shep is completely by himself. Easy first down. And this is because of scheme, people. I'm just telling people the truth. This is because of scheme. But Shep does a great job of catching that, making Justin Simmons miss, and getting some yards after the catch. Now, I don't have much film on Galladay as far as actual film of him running routes because I have the broadcast because they don't have the all 22. But this is an example of poor play design by Jason Garrett. Very poor play design. Something I do not like to see. And it almost results in an interception. And what you're going to have is Galladay is going to run a, a pretty much a kind of a post route. Sterling Shepard is going to run a post route at the exact same depth down the field, which makes absolutely no sense to me. You have two guys taking up the same area. No good. I, I don't want to see this ever run again. And it pretty much caused an interception. Pretty much caused an interception if we have a mere human playing wide receiver for us. But luckily... And this is why I feel confident about this offense because of what I've seen so far play-wise and who we have here with Galladay that open up things for Sterling Shepard. Galladay on this particular play gets up the field. You have him and Shep pretty much taking up the same area. Too many people around here. Galladay breaks inside. Actually, Shep is, <laughs> is able to pull that guy away just enough and the ball is kind of underthrown behind Kenny Galladay. And he's able to come up and make just a great catch. Just, just to, to steal that ball away from the cornerback and prevent the worst from happening. Once again, thank you to our sponsor, BetQL, the only app you will need to beat your sports book. Find their information along with the 25% off discount code in the description of this video. Also, check out the special bet mgm offer in the description in order to receive a free year of betql and other sportsbook sign up offers and bonuses so just to give my quick thoughts on this whole thing um first off the takeaways sterling Shepard looks great he has been schemed open a couple of times but every receiver gets schemed open and it's great to see that he's actually being schemed open i mean we we never saw this last year uh, people still have been complaining about Garrett. I still want to see some more shots down the field. We haven't seen that. I still want to see it. I mean, we, we need to be more aggressive. 
overall, but I saw some nice play designs. Kenny Galladay seems to make up for poor play designs and poor quarterback play at times. And if both of these two can stay healthy, which is sort of an if because they both have injury concerns, but if both of these guys can stay healthy, you will see a huge jump from our offense, even with Jason Garrett calling plays, because I do see somewhat of an attempt to be a little bit different than before. So you guys let me know what you thought of this past week's game, just from the receiver performance standpoint, from when you saw him out there, and what are you looking forward to next week? Hopefully next week you'll see me breaking down some all 22. Maybe it's Kadarius Tony. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and during the season I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.